Okay, in your blue folder, uh, whatever this thing's called. switches for these fluorescents? started off and then let them let the guys teach number five anybody who wants to play an instrument go and grab one there's uh, several of them up here we'll do more of this later though somewhere number five higher ground yeah it won't it won't help him any that's why I got him over there because he's Playing by ear. I'll have a callous ear before the weekend is out. Okay, number five. I'm pressing on the upper page. New eyes I made.
Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden so the form of sound words and fighting the good fight of faith and what an what a awesome topic it is and um, what's that? Where's your mic? I give him a couple of minutes to, um, you know where? You need to set up the mic? It's on the, I put it on the, the edge of the, up there? Yeah, right up on the, on the edge of the sill. Okay. Check one, two. How's that? Check one, two. Can you hear me? We're working good. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Check one, two. Hey. Check one, two. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Check, check. All right. Yeah, so... We're going to be talking today on holding fast the form of sound words and fighting the good fight of faith. And um, man, what an what a awesome topic this is. And it's been a, a really good learning experience for me just delving into this. And, and um, I really hope and pray that this can be something that you can really just take a hold of and something that would just be very, very close and dear to you to encourage you and, and what the what the Word says and what the Lord would have us be doing today. Um, I'll go ahead and start off in a, in a word of prayer with you all. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I just, I just thank you for this, this day and opportunity, opportunity to be together and just look at your word together, Lord, and I just pray that it would make such a difference in our, each and every one of our lives. And um, Oh, Lord, I just, I just thank you so much for, for the word you've given us, and I just pray that we would just really let it soak in and make a, let it make a difference in our life and all for the glory and honor for you, Lord. I just thank you for that in your precious name. For everything you've done, thank you. Amen. And in, in all love, I don't care if uh, we bleed over each other's messages this weekend. I think it's, I think it's great to, to have review. And even if we have the, like, the same message from all the guys, it would, it would just keep getting richer and just sink in deeper, just like a, just like a, a cup of tea with a whole bunch of tea bags, just really rich and good. So I, th- I think that'd be fine. And uh, I think it's a real treat to have us preaching on similar topics like we've done uh, like last year and, and this year, just... Uh, Seeing the way that each of us bring a message to life, it's just, um, I don't know, it's just really neat. It just brings this, this deeper kind of light to, to the topics. I, I like that. So, I've just been just going over this topic, so this topic and uh, going through the Second Timothy here and just, just thinking about a lot of things and that... Um, just thinking about, about purpose and, and and Paul just showed all this this purpose to to Timothy and in a way you can kind of um, take that take those words that, that Paul gave to Timothy to us as, as a member of the body of Christ we are to take that that advice and, and share it to others and just thought a lot about purpose, and it just it just makes so much sense. Like this, we have such a job to do, and um, it's just, it's just like it's just I've come to a, this understanding that it is my purpose to to take hold of this job, and and uh, I mean, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the Lord shall direct thy path. It's all about Him. Get the focus off of us and onto what's really important, and things. The things that God has shown us and laid out for us in His Word, it's just it's so good. Um, if you would turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, that would be wonderful. Second Timothy chapter 1. there. Um, I will get there as well here. So, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with my from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. I just I love the example that the call, that Paul gives well, in, in all his epistles, but especially in, in Second Timothy about just just showing this example as a leader, this well seasoned man of God, just. Just, it's just wonderful, this, the, this God-breathed example through his, his words and just in his actions and what he did. And just, just love the example, and it's such a, a wonderful thing to, to, uh, to just soak in and let it make a difference in you. Let's see here. I've been think, thinking a lot lately too about these how 
sound words are so so healthy in our life and good for our life and good for our body and good for the body of Christ. Holding fast the form of sound words and uh, maybe think of Ephesians. If you want to go with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 21. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4.21. It says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Part of part of what that is saying is, is like the timing. Like don't let don't let bitterness drag out and fester. Take care of it as soon as possible. Um, things happen so much better and work the way God intended when we let Him live in us and just allow Him to use us in a timely fashion. And oh, it's just it's just so good to just just allow what God would have happen. It's so good. Verse 27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. Don't give any ground to the enemy. Like, it's such like a, a, doth, a dumb moment thing, really, but, but yet you can think, okay, why would we do that? Well, as people, we are attacked by Satan all the time, and if we aren't prepared for it, standing confident in the whole armor of God and... I mean, if, if we're not, not standing confident in that, and then basically we will lose the battles and give place to the devil. And this is such a good thing to re- remember and, and to take this as a reminder. It, it sure can happen. We, we can give place to the devil if, if we don't have that armor on and if we don't have those words working through us. Um, that confidence in a full suit of armor is just amazing. Like, um, just imagine just just being just so set and prepared, and just ready for any onslaught. It's just it's so different than being out in a battlefield with just I don't know just your cotton clothing. You're just vulnerable, and, and you're just just asking for for failure. So. Don't give place to the devil. Be prepared. Let him that stole, verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Just, oh, there's so many wonderful principles in scriptures. It's just, it, I'm never, it never ceases to amaze me, just just the vastness and depth of, of God's word and, and how good it is and and if we really apply it, it, just, wow, good things happen. In a book, verse 28, God made a way that is good, and when we follow that, good things just happen. And um, people are encouraged. And that, that positive and godly encouragement is really what makes a difference in so many things in life. It points people back to his word, um, to his form of sound words, and this principle reigns true, I believe, with spiritual things too. Like if you, if you're running on empty spiritually, it's pretty hard to to give some, someone some spiritual fuel if you're almost out. And we need to be soaking up the word and what it says in order to to have a full tank to to be able to give to people. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And I was kind of focusing on, in my message today, on, on words, and not, not only the, the form of sound words, specifically what, what, what God has given us today in this age of grace, but even just just words by themselves, like just 
words mean so much and can either give a wonderful, good, positive help and effect or the opposite. And um, this, this verse really, really popped out to me um, as, I was, as I was going through Second Timothy. Um, use them, use those words which are good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. The opposite can happen if you, if you let communi- if you let corrupt communication, rain through your mouth. Um, yeah, it's just great to have a roadmap for life, isn't it? All these, these just wonderful, just, uh, just guidelines for for life is so good. Um, okay, a couple more verses in Ephesians here I wanted to cover. It says, "And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God." whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And I thought about the word expedient. Um, um, There's a, a definition here of hastening, urging forward, fit or suitable for the purpose, proper under the circumstances. Many things may be lawful which are not expedient. Also useful and profitable. And I've just, I just, I just want that. I want to be expedient for my Lord and Savior, for everything that he did for me. Like, I want to be useful for him and profitable and, and you know, proper under the circumstances and suitable for the purpose. I just, just something that's really been just kind of reigning true in my life lately. I just, I just want that so much. It's like, man, everything he's done for me, I just want to, in any way I possibly can, just return, return something to him. Just all for his glory and honor. Nothing, nothing for me. Um, and I also thought, thought a lot about the word passive in, in going through this. Um, the definition in uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary for passive is suffering, not acting, receiving, or capable of receiving impressions from external agents. We were passive spectators, not actors in the scene. The mind is wholly passive in the reception of all its simple ideas. God is not in any respect passive. Um, also, unresisting, not opposing, receiving or suffering without resistance, as passive obedience. Passive submission to the laws. Passive verb in grammar is a verb which expresses passion or the effect of an action of some agent. As an El de Sur, I am taught in English, she is loved and admired by her friends, she is assailed by slander. Passive obedience, as used by writers on government, denotes not only quiet, unresting submission to power, but implies the denial of the right to resistance or the recognition of the duty to submit in all cases to the existing government. Passive prayer among mystic divines is suspension of the activity of the soul or intellectual faculties, the soul remaining quiet and yielding only to the impulses of grace. So Satan would love us to be passive to him uh, in our spiritual thinking, in our, in our life, in the way we act and in the way we operate and sharing about the Lord. He, Satan would love us to be passive to, to his ways and what he wants. But we should not be passive to the any of that, any of those fears that visit us, um, any of the lies that glide in from Satan. Um, but instead, we should, we should be passive and submissive to our dear Lord and Savior, um, to his will. And then in turn, you know, being, being passive to that, but in turn, just walking full force in the way we should go in, according to his word. And I thought I'd share a few, a few verses about God's will with you that would, would go along with that. Um, 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4. I've got, I've got quite a few verses here. So, um, if you were taking notes, you might just want to write them down. Uh, for sake of time, we'll probably just uh, go through them fairly fast. But 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved, and to come into the knowledge of the truth. That's such a huge part of God's will. Like that's God's will to 
that men would be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And um, we have to be holding fast the form of sound words for that to happen. Um, if, if we as believers aren't having his, his word in us, it's really hard to have his will be lived out through us if, if we're not um, allowing him to, to work through us and in us. Um, Romans 8.27 is the next verse I was going to show you. It says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Uh, so cool. The Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ make intercession for us. They are for us, and they're, they're, like, they're like praying for us to, to God. And um, they, know what, they know what we need to, to continue in life and deal with things, and they know what we need to be able to be effective for God, and they're, just, they're for us. It's so encouraging. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's just so good to have that renewal of the word in your mind. and um, It's something that that I haven't, I haven't done enough of, and it just each time I delve deeper and deeper, it gets that much just sweeter and easier to, to live for Him. And oh, I just want to keep, keep abounding in that. And I just hope and pray that, that you all can as well. It's just so good. Along with that, proving, First uh, Thessalonians five twenty one: Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Um, oh, this is so, so good to, to just prove all things, and uh, just, it, the word, the word says it so well, just prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Galatians 1, 4 says also, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Ephesians 1, nine, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Ephesians 5.17, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So important to be in the word, that's how we can understand the, you know, being a saved person, saved and secure in Christ, studying his word, we can find out his will for us and than be able to do it. Amen. Ephesians 6.6 6, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Philippians 2.13 For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's all about God, not us. I like the saying, more of thee and less of me. For this cause we also... In Colossians 1 9, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Colossians 4 4 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 4 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I, just, I, just, I love going through and just looking for things about the will of God and how it's just so rich. Like that's like the will of God. It's what he wants. It's what, it's what he wills. And, and what an important thing that really is. Um, to just have that in our mindset and our heart set, and um, it's, just, it's just it's just good what God would have us do. So that's something that we should be really, really wanting to do and to to live that out for Him because it's just it's what He would want, and He's so good, and He's He's everything. He's He's the Creator and Savior of us all, and man, just. So good to 
just to be able to let him work in us and things will be good. Thinking about holding fast, um, to hold fast to something, I mean, has to do with, with a grip, strength. What do, you, what do you do to get a strong grip? Like there, are, there are lots of different ways. I, I work in the concrete business and um, I do it with Micah and Malika here in Wisconsin, and there's a, there's a great way to get a, um, a great way to get a strong grip is by just doing the work, for example. Um, we do all sorts of things with all sorts of different tools, but for example, like grabbing a concrete rake, just raking back and forth, like all this big stretch of driveway or a, a bottom of a huge manure pit or some long uh, manure scrape alleyway. Like there's a lot of work to do in this raking, back and forth and push pulling and twisting a, a bull float handle for example um, especially on the on the big manure pits it'll be like pretty steep angle and be we'll have to push this big bull float and flatten the concrete out it'll be up and down the slope and, and across and you're just flexing and gripping and twisting constantly it's, it's building up um, strength and developing endurance to last longer through the work throughout the day and um, if you picture like just getting into something like that um, like the working into it stage so to speak can be very rough uh, it, it hurts and you get very sore but if you stick with it you just get built up to it and um, there's a lot of a lot of things that that you can help yourself going through that you, you know, warm up before you, you just jump into a crazy hard uh, work day uh, stretch afterwards really helps refuel is so important rest and be thinking of like the different the spiritual analogies the, the spiritual side of this com comparing compared this to spiritual things like I mean holding fast to a bull float handle or something compared to you know, holding fast to the form of sound words by, by getting that experience and by doing that over and over you, you get that built up and so by, by being in the word constant often it will, you'll just be st strengthened by it you will gain this endurance and it will become easier um, And you, you reap the benefits of being built up and strong, fit and in shape, able to remain. Um, you can reach a point for, you know, whether it be physical work or, or spiritual work, you can reach a point where it actually feels good, um, as opposed to, say, the first days of, of working into something. Like, oh, I just my muscles are so sore, my joints are just taxed. Um, but you can reach the point where your body is just built up to it or your, your inner man is just built up to it where it actually just feels good and amazing to just, just be working hard. And same thing spiritually. Like just the more you do it, the easier it is, the more rewarding it is. And um, it just feels great. And versus the pain of starting out, it's amazing. Then it's, it's so much easier to do the work. You gain the endurance, and and through this labor, you you gain the experience and wisdom, and the knowledge of what to do because you've done it before, and and uh, the confidence of having done it and having accomplished that in the past, and you know you can do it again. And that's why it's so, so good to to stay in in the word and in the work. It you just you. You gain that confidence, and just the more you do it, the easier it is. Um, you also gain muscle memory. Um, togg toggling bit back, back and forth between concrete work and, and just, just living the Christian life. Um, you're quicker to react, which reminds me to say that it's good to learn the right way of doing things. Uh, because contrary, contrary to popular belief of practice makes perfect, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And 
uh, what, what I mean by that, like practicing the wrong things the wrong way will not lead to perfection, but the opposite. But however, if you do what is right, like taking taking small steps and accomplishing things the right way, getting that down, getting confidence in that, in what you're doing, and, and able to do that perfect thing, like as well as you can tie a shoelace, just getting that, that muscle memory and just getting it down, doing the right things, that then then you can work like work to perfection. Um, perfect practice makes perfect. So practicing the form of sound words will lead to perfection, so to speak. That it will lead to glory to God and praise and honor to Him. And in concrete work, it is so important to be fueled up, to, to have the proper nutrition, to be prepared for the work day, and to rebuild after the, the body has, has worked. Um, and likewise, with spiritual fuel, like I mentioned earlier, like, man, we, we need a full tank to be able to, to, to run ourselves and to be able to give to others. It's so important to, to have fuel. And uh, also on the, the topic of, of concrete work, we work a lot with, with concrete forms for, for pouring different walls of different kinds. And you know, thinking about the form of sound words and the pattern that, that we have in Paul's epistles and, and the entire word of God, we, it's, it's a form, a pattern, a, a cast, so to speak, like um, quickly about, about a concrete wall. There's, there are many different things that need to be done to prepare for that wall. You need to, you need to have your, your foundation, the footing, the, the whole the platform you're working on. That, that first off has to be right. That's, um, it all depends on what you're doing. Um, you need to have the foundation correct for whatever, ap- whatever application you're doing. Um, next, you have to to do the proper things to connect those forms together. Uh, there'll be two sides to a form for a wall, for example, and you need to put different wall ties and different things together to make it strong and fast. And you need to put braces on it, uh, otherwise the concrete can, can blow out. There's so much pressure. You have to just do these proper things. And likewise, in our lives, with the um, in our lives as Christians, if we if we don't do the proper things, we'll have blowouts, and um, it's just so important to to just go through the proper things. Like I mentioned with the the armor of God, just to, to have all those pieces of the armor. Like I love love the way how how Kurt talked about it last night. Just the the armor of God and how important that is. And um, there, are, there are steps to take to be successful in Christ, and there's steps that will lead us away from that. And it's just so important to just be mindful of that and be renewed in that. And the importance of right now to not leave your comrades in arms one man down. And if, if you're not prepared, you can get prepared ASAP and, and all for the good of your comrades and for the honor of and glory and respect of your leader and I mean, you can get yourself the training needed and, exor- and the exercise needed and then jump into it with everything you have and everything in your being and with the with power, love and the sound mind of Christ it can be done and we can then fight the good fight um, I have some different verses uh, of encouragement that kind of bring to light the fighting the good fight. Um, I got 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. There's, it's just a good, a good thing to, to soak in and be mindful of in our, in our fight for the Lord in our life to to just look to the things of expedience, and it's just so good. First Corinthians ten thirteen says, "There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So many wonderful battle plans in Scripture for us that we can um, just learn from and train, and they will, they will help us in the battle. 2 Corinthians 12.9 And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Ephesians 6, 7, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. That's such an important thing I've found to be very true, like just in different life experiences. Um, when you do something towards the Lord or for the Lord, it's just it's just so much more rich. Like the, the, the outcome is just way better. And there's a lot of things with that. It's like, a heart issue with the Lord. And like, um, it's just a wonderful relationship thing that can happen there. And then also, by doing that, it just shows this, this different example for people watching you doing something. If you're, if you're just doing it with your heart for the Lord, there's something different there. And, uh, I mean, you, you can be doing things for people and they're like, oh, I want to you know, please them, do, do a good job for them. But, all in that, doing it as to the Lord for them, and not just to men. Like, it's just it's so good. Also, Philippians one six, being confident of this very thing that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's that's encouraging to me. It's, um, God's not finished with me yet, and I have time to to work for him, and I'm just so thankful for that, and I know I've, I've squandered time so much, but I just want to continue in his grace and, and just use that time for him as much as I possibly can. Amen. Uh, God, help us. Also, 2 Corinthians 12.5 says, Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory but in mine infirmities. Um, such a wonderful mindset to, to be glorying in our Savior and just getting the focus off of us. It's so easy to just, just, to, uh, just put the focus on us and kind of ha- have a, a pity party for ourselves, but that's, it's, so, it's so draining and, and the opposite of how God would have us. He, he would have us look into Him if you... I mean, it's just such a wonderful thing and a, a helpful thing to be just focusing on him and something positive, but much more so like the most positive, amazing being in the world, in the universe, in creation, everything. Like He's everything, and if we're focusing on that amazing goodness, just good things happen for, for him, and um, to get the focus off of us is so good. And I also I love the analogy of waiting. I don't know, maybe some of you have heard this. Um, we are not waiting on the Lord in the sense of sitting on our hands Amen. on a bench in the park, just taking up space, but waiting for Him to return. Um, for example, or, okay, not just taking up space, waiting for Him to return, but for example, we are to be waiting on the Lord like a waiter in a restaurant, serving willingly being active and through that waiting on the Lord from the heart we can really be used by God just in that service like that's that's the kind of waiting we should be doing in this life being instant in season and out of season uh, walking in the spirit it's, it's, just, it's just wow to let let God's word reign through us let the spirit work instead of our flesh that's that's the the pattern for success in life for the Lord is just to to let him live his life through us. It's not our life anyway. And to just be walking in the spirit, that's the way to do it. Second Timothy one or again, I've got a few more a few more verses to go through there with you all. Right. 
Let's go to verse 13 of, of chapter 1. 2 Timothy 1, 13. It says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Um, with a quick go to Titus 1, 9 as well. Titus 1, verse 9. I really encourage you all to, to dig into these, these topics that, we, that have been brought up this, this weekend. Um, just get even a, a deeper personal understanding for yourself that um, there's just such wonderful patterns that God has given us here. And this, this holding fast the form of sound words is really something. Titus 1 verse 9, holding fast the faithful words, the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. We have, we have such a, a wonderful job to do, and um, God has given us the, the road map to accomplish his will and his jobs that, that he needs and wants to be done. And it's just a wonderful thing that we, we can hold fast the faithful word that that has been taught to us in, in Scripture, and we can we can be soaking that in, yes, for ourselves, but oh, so much more so just for everyone else in the world, the fellow saints, to encourage them and uplift them, and to be an example for those that that are not saved, that they would want what you have, and to to be able to share with them the truth from Scripture. So that, so that they could be you know, one of us, saved and secure and able to, to share that with everyone else. First Thessalonians 5.21 goes along with that. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Yeah. Go back to, uh, stay in, in first, or, sorry, stay there in chapter 1 of Second Timothy Verse 14 says, That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Um, down to um, verse 16 The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And then how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Just thinking about camaraderie and just how, how encouraging it can be for, for like-minded believers to, to just be working for each other, for the Lord. And uh, just be in that, that body, like fitly joined together and just just functioning well together. It's just so good. Um, by the way, um, how much how much time was I slotted for this early? Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Thinking about true words and words of life, um, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he is, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Um, just uh, also think about Proverbs four and verse thirteen it says, "Take fast hold of instruction; let her not go; keep her, for she is thy life." Um, so many wonderful examples of instruction for us. Um, to really take a hold of because it's important. Um, and thinking about about just words in general and, and how how important they are and how much they they affect us. Um, I'd heard about the study done to to water. Uh, I'd like to share with you. It's very interesting. Through the 1990s, 
This Dr. Masaru Emoto performed a series of experiments ob observing the physical effect of words, prayers, music, and environment on the crystalline structure of water. Emoto hired, uh, he hired photographers to take pictures of water after being exposed to the different variables and subsequently frozen so that they could form crystalline structures. The results were nothing short of remarkable. And uh, I'd be happy to show you all pictures later um, or give you the website to, to check out these, but um, there are different, different examples of pictures. Um, okay. Different, different pictures of, uh, I'll go through and show an, or talk about an example here. Um, there's a, a water before prayer, it's just kind of a, kind of a round bubble type of, uh, type of picture, and the water after prayer, this is in frozen form by the way, is this beautiful snowflake type, type thing. Uh, it was very interesting, and, and also, um, after observing these miraculous results, Dr. Emoto went on to type out different words, both positive and negative in nature, and taped them to containers full of water. The results were as follows. Uh, the one that said, you make me sick, I will kill you, was very, very muddled and, and distorted looking. Another one said, Adolf Hitler, similar too, just this, this kind of dark, distorted looking looking molecule. Um, another one said thank you and love and appreciation. And these are just beautiful sym like symmetrical snowflake looking looking pictures. It's just a fascinating thing I thought. And it says as you can tell the water stamped with positive words is far more symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing than that stamped with dark negative phrases. If you are reading this article on this particular website, you probably already knew that positive and negative thinking have a major impact on the surrounding environment. That concept is relatively easy to grasp, but this extremely tangible evidence of it is, is astounding. If the words and thoughts that come out of us have this effect on water crystals, it's amazing to think of what kind of effect they have on the people and events that come into our lives. Oh, and by the way, the average human body is 60% water. Pondered that one a while. Some may say that this could be the work of biased photographers or biased photo selection by Emoto himself. However, Emoto dispelled this accusation in an interview during which he stated, This is one of the more difficult areas to clarify. However, from continuing these experiments, we have come to the conclusion that the water is reacting to the actual words. For example, for our trip to Europe, we tried using the words thank you and you fool in German. The people on our team who took the actual photographs of the water crystals did not understand the German for you fool, and yet were able to obtain exactly the same kind of results in the different crystal formations based on the words used. Once a certain vibration is introduced to the water, how long does the water remember that crystalline structure? The answer to that is, this will be different depending on the original structure of the water itself. Tap water will lose its memory quickly. We refer to the crystalline structure of water as clusters. The smaller the clusters, the longer the water will retain its memory. If there is too much space between the clusters, other information could easily infiltrate the space, making it hard for the clusters to hold the integrity of the information. Other microorganisms could also enter this space. A tight bonding structure is best for maintaining the integrity of information. Another question, what kind of words would create smaller clusters and what kind of words would create larger clusters? Slang words like you fool destroy clusters. You would not see any crystals in these cases. Negative phrases and words create large clusters or will not form clusters. And positive, beautiful words and phrases create small, tight clusters. Um, for more information on Emoto's experiments with water, you can visit his website. And I can, can get that to you, you all if you're interested. But um, I just thought that was very interesting how words really do mean something and God is, through his scripture, makes such a point about, you know, sound speech and, and just 
all these different things about the way to, to treat one another and the, the, the good things to say and to uplift and build up. And it's, it's just really neat to see these tangible examples in our life giving credence to the truth of his word. It's, it's really, really encouraging to me. Um, and so just thinking about thinking about back to our, our fight and how, how we can fight the good fight of faith, it's, it's ultimately the word of God. Like I've, I've been talking about that that is our foundation that, that is our fuel, and if we remain in that and, and grow in that, good things will happen, and, and also camaraderie with our, with our fellow members in, in the body of Christ. That, that is such an amazing way in, to, to fight and accomplish this fight of faith. We, we need numbers, and there are strength in numbers, and if we, if we come together we can do so much and accomplish so much for and with our Lord and um, just by believing God's word through a prayerful mindset um, just having Christ living his life through us is just the way to do it um, imagine imagine having a, a life saved Like imagine if you got your life saved by a hero for example let's say so let's say Spider-Man swooped down and grabbed you out of the way of this oncoming car that nearly hit you head on. Like, wow, like your life could have ended right now. could have been totally over. But it's not. You have now just been saved from certain death and have another chance, so to speak. Imagine how grateful you would be, how you'd want to do things that really matter and, um, and to make use of the precious time that we have and... Think of it in a deeper way, like in an old, older way, for example, the story of Robinson, Robinson Crusoe, and he saved this man Friday, he named him, and because he saved this man's life, Friday commits his life in service to the man that saved his, and because he had Mr. Crusoe, or, uh, excuse me, because had Mr. Crusoe not saved him, he would be dead, so Friday spends his time being Crusoe's right-hand man, serving him in whatever projects he has going on, respecting him, learning from him, living with vigor and purpose, committed in service to his Savior. And that's how we should be in Christ. Fighting the good fight with him, fighting the good fight for him. He saved us from eternal death, something we were going to have to pay. It was, it was our debt, but now we're free. Free from that and free to live in the power and love of Christ Jesus, the Lord. And, and now doing his bidding and accomplishing what he asks and tells us to do is, is something doable now. Like, and we can redeem the time because the days are evil. And um, man, like we have a lot of work to accomplish for him. But we can do it with his, with his power. And it reminds me, my Aunt Kathy has a little jingle that she's shared with me in the past that goes, we have a lot of work to do. Yes, we have a lot of work to do. And uh, <laughs> it's in the, the context of, of uh, there's work to be done for the Lord and so much work that God has for us to do, but what a privilege and honor it is for us um, to be able to serve the Lord our God and that we can accomplish things for him Meanwhile, he's helping us do the, that work. It's just so cool. We're being helped by him through it all. It's, it's so good. Um, and is what we are talking about worthwhile? Is it of substance? Or is it of tasteless fluff? Like you don't see people sitting around eating packing peanuts, like, you know, the that styrofoam pa packing popcorn, whatever they call it. You don't see people around eating packing pe peanuts, like there's no profit in that. There's, there's, uh, there's no flavor with a nasty aftertaste, trust me. <laughs> uh, and not only is there no profit in it, but there are negative side effects that come from it. No nutritional value. Uh, eating them can make you sick, and you could even die from eating them. Hmm. Better stick with the stuff you know, huh? Like, 
and don't do stuff that you know to be good. And uh, anyway, I just I've been thinking a lot about legacy as well, going through through this passage and topic, and like, how do you want your life history to go down in the eternal archives? Um, man, like I just I just want to be so quick and alive and and bright and bushy tailed and vibrant for my Savior and and just energetic in the life of Christ and and accomplishing what He would have me to do and. I was just I just want that so much and I pray that pray that you all would just be renewed with vigor to to really do his his will and be in his word and and to hold fast to the form of the sound words he's given us um, it, and all that reminded me of a of a uh, quote I had come across in the past from George Washington Carver it says no individual has any right to enter this world or leave it without leaving behind them a distinct and legitimate reason for having passed through it. And it was a good thing to to let sink in and to just I mean, to think about. We have a a purpose here, and I ask this to myself included. I, I want to seize the day and give God the glory and honor and respect. And the verse, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. In Second Timothy there, I mean, Paul, Paul was a seasoned man in Christ. And what a, what a picture to, to follow after there. He, he, he tells, tells Timothy, all these things to do, Gives him the pattern um, from his inspired words from the Lord to his experience and, and uh, example showing Timothy. Um, and in there he, he tells him, you know, my, my time is coming up here. It's your it's your your job and time for you to to step up and take over, and it's like it can be an overwhelming crazy thought, but um, it's so doable. We we, we have the the example in scripture the, of the men that have done it, the people that have done it, and the God that fueled and provided. At all, like we, we have the technology, <laughs> and I just, I just think it's a wonderful thing to, to keep in mind the experience and the, the example of the Apostle Paul, that, and everything he did. Verse seven: I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith, and I just pray that we would, we would let that reign true in our hearts and minds and let that be a difference and make a difference in our life. So that's what I have for y'all. I hope it was an encouragement. Thank you.